Ta-da! Good morning, Unity of Palm Harbor. It's great to be back. I had a couple weeks to go play, and a couple of us in the congregation went, and I've never been to Wisconsin, and so there was fall. The leaves were changing, we got to wear sweaters, so maybe that's a dose of what you do when you live in Florida, you go elsewhere for fall. <laughs> but I'm very grateful this morning was cool, my big dogs loved it very much. And I wanted to share with you, um, when you do a road trip with people, you get a chance to really know their inner goddess. And you have a chance to go to other places and experience what another place has to offer. And I'm going to share in my talk today, it was very important for me to visit another Unity Church. I don't get that opportunity very often. And one of my fellow ministerial students is now the senior minister at Oak Park in Chicago, right outside Chicago. So I'm going to bring a little of his story also this morning. But for those who've been waiting for the IG announcement, the big <laughs> announcement, I heard a lot of rumblings as I came back going, what is it, what is it, what is it? And I had been sharing, even from the platform, when I first came and I did my try out to be your senior minister, how would it feel if a group of us went to Unity Village? So that is the big announcement. Um, I want to share with you, I had to put a deposit down back in May, because believe it or not, COVID or not, the village retreats are filling up very quickly. So if you have any interest in going, we have a space for 20 people, including your minister, and it's going to be the dates October 12th through the 16th. So it's fall at the village. And I asked them, I said, well, the fountains be on. And if there's no snow, the fountains will be on. So we have a wonderful trip planned that includes the possibility for you to walk the 12 power prayer garden, to walk the labyrinth. We're going to have a guided tour. We're going to have a minister come and speak to us about Charles and Myrtle Fillmore. She teaches our ministerial students. She teaches our SEE classes. So we're going to have a big, beautiful four days, five nights, or five days, four nights at Unity Village. So if you have any interest whatsoever, yes, Mark? You said October. This is October. Next year. Next year. I'm giving everybody a year to get your um, abundance, prosperity, thoughts, and consciousness so you can say, yes, I want to be a part of that trip. And we'll have some meetings as we get closer to it. I just want to plant a seed. I'll tell you what, I have wonderful places I've been in the world, and Unity Village is very near and dear to my heart. And I would love to share the journey if it calls to you. So that is our big announcement. <coughs> When, uh, with that, let's welcome everybody who's out there watching us on the airwaves. Thank you for being present with us today. Thank you, everybody here in our congregation. Along your spiritual path, I see some people I haven't seen in a while, and I'm grateful that you've come back. So let's open this time in prayer. Feel into the richness of this pure sanctuary. This place where we create the life we want to lead and live. And a place of joyful and joy-filled abundance. Whatever our craft, whatever our talent, however we show up in the world, feel into this space that all is well. All is well. And we are grateful for the practices we bring together, the understanding of spirit that we share with one another. And we open our hearts even bigger to expand outside this building, this room, and we take it to the children in our other building. And we surround them with love and light and guidance and divine order. And we spread from that out into the neighborhoods surrounding our community inviting them to come and visit with us, especially to come on our garage sale day. Be part of our prosperity, our clearing out, our making room for the new. And we spread further than that with our hearts and our minds as we go through our daily journey. And we say yes, yes to showing up bigger than life, 
and in and through the power of the nature of the Christ, we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Amen. One other little announcement I'd like to make. For those of you who are watching our weekly newsletter, if you're not getting it or you're not thinking you're getting it, it's called The Pulse of Palm Harbor. So if you're not getting it, call Luann in the office, get signed up for it. We have all kinds of, not just the events that you see on our announcements, but as of the last four or five months, when the board meets, we put our minutes in the newsletter. There's a link. So if you want to know what your board is talking about, if you want to know what is happening in Palm Harbor and what is up for discussion, I invite you to take a look at this. Of course, it talks about our financial status, but it tells you what our hopes and our dreams are for building the future of this church. And you are all a part of that. You online are a part of that. And we say thank you for donating and giving generously of your time, your talents, and your tithes to this ministry. So be a part of it. If you're not signed up, call Luann and make sure you get signed up. And with that, Rory, do you have some things you want to share? Well, so if you all join me by standing. I really was hoping we could do the service outside because it's so beautiful, but there's just <laughs> no way we could have done it. So. Okay, together. To advance, advance well-being well -being by sharing compassion and inclusiveness with integrity and spirituality. Amen? We are all friends here. There are no strangers once you walk inside that door. We welcome you to linger in our family of love and hold you in our hearts the way This little light of mine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Shine all over the whole wide world, I'm gonna let it shine. Shine all over the whole wide world, I'm gonna let it shine. Shine all over the whole wide world, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. All right, from the top. This the light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This the light of mine, and I'm going to let it shine. This the light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Excellent nice. job. Thank you. you. may be seated. Okay, are you being called to take the next step to expanding your prayer practice? Prayer chaplain training is scheduled from November 19th and 20th here at Unity of Palm Harbor. And as a reminder, you have to be a member to be a prayer chaplain. And informational brochures and sign-up sheets are available in the lobby. And of course, it's that time of year where our production team is ramping up to do the holiday. Uh, we are in need of uh, volunteers. We're upgrading our systems here. We need more volunteers for Rob in the booth to help him and his team out. Please, no experience necessary, please see Rob. We're, we're dire need of some help for this holiday, so please uh, see Rob on that. The reminder, our Out With The Old or Yard Sale is next Sunday, October 24th from 9 to 2. Uh, any small items that you may have that you'd like to donate, uh, please bring them in this week, no later than Saturday. Uh, and the sale will be next Sunday from 9 to 2, as I said. All proceeds from the sale goes to the UPH General Fund, and items not sold at the end of the sale are going to go to the Florida Sheriff's Youth Ranches. Great opportunity there. 
Um, I also need some more volunteers for that, so if you could sign up, I've got some wonderful people signed up for setup on Saturday and for the sale on Sunday. So I appreciate that. Um, the teens will be hosting a fortune telling table out front after the service. So stop by and see what that's all about if you would. Please make sure you wear your mask when you're at that table. Um, and we also need volunteers in moving of the office. I don't know where this month went, but we're ready. So uh, we're gonna start doing walls, um, painting and so on, and then start packing to bring the offices over. Please get with Reverend Tracy or Rob or myself if you're interested in helping. So the more people we have, the smoother it's going to go. Okay, um, our daily word reader today is the beautiful Judith Overcash, and our prayer chaplain today will be Judith Overcash. Oh, it's very good. And our word today is world peace. And I was so taken, we were in Chicago for a day, and people of every color, every stripe, every religion, all getting along, all having a great time in the fountains, all in the museums and on the streets and in the place where we had lunch. It was so nice and I thought, why can't we all live like that all the time, everywhere? Why do we have to have conflict? So the word today is world peace. I am a peaceful presence to all. I am a peaceful presence to all. Take that in and relax into these words. Peace in the world begins with me. I consider it a sacred responsibility to respond to all people and all circumstances peacefully. I forgive myself for those moments I am less than peaceful and quickly return to the peace of God in my heart. I am a living expression of God, just as all people are. My tranquil bearing inspires peacefulness wherever I go and with everyone I meet. Each day, I join like-minded people everywhere in a renewed commitment to be a presence of peace. I give thanks that as each of us communicates God's love in our own unique ways, peace and harmony are established in individuals, families, communities, and then among nations of the world. And from 2 Corinthians, these words, put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another and live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. And so it is, amen.
I think the first time that Diego and Ray visited with us, they sang that. And I said, would you do it again before I do meditation? So thank you. Thank you. Just beautiful. So let's take this time and prepare ourselves to enter that sacred place of the silence. And just allow your body to be fully supported in that chair that is holding you firmly. Maybe both feet are on the ground. And let your breath come in and out. In and out. Like the rhythm of life. And just feel this sacred sanctuary where you are safe, where you are safe. And any cares that you might have that show up as obstacles, I invite you to leave them at the door. Leave them at the door and just put your mind in this place right here, right now, in the current moment. And let's feel the energy in this room, breathing in and out, in and out. I invite you to open your mind to even the thoughts that Judith said of a world where we all get along. Maybe you can bring into your mind's eye a certain individual or individuals where there's been some strife, some uncomfortableness. And I invite you to bring them in your heart space and expand your capacity a little wider to know that all there really is at the core of our inner being is this gentle wave of love. this gentle wave of God, this common ground where no matter our daily thoughts, we can come back to this gentle wave of love. So for just a few moments, let's go into that space. Whatever is up for you, I invite you to lay it down at the altar of your highest good, knowing that you are in and through the life-breathing essence of what we call Christ. And to be in that moment now. Love is all races. Love is all religion. Love is all age. Love is all capacities. Love is all abilities and disabilities. And we are grateful for each person who shows up as the divine expression that they came into this lifetime to be. We release any judgment. 
We release anything unlike love to the individuals in our lives. And we work on this daily, releasing at night all that we do not want to carry forward, letting go, letting God show up as love in and through our lives. And for this, we are so blessed. We are so blessed. Thank you, universal flow, the energy that we call life, the energy that we call us, the energy we call God. And so it is, and so we let it be. Amen.
Wow, you got to take a breath after that one. Woo! There's no unreachable stars with you, Diego, and each one of us in here present. Wow. Wow, do you feel it? <laughs> so, give me just a minute, Ray, and I'm going to bring you into this. We're going to do a little film clip this morning, but first I want to share, for those of you who kind of watch our Facebook, our social media, Misty, who's our director in the social media realm, found this beautiful quote by Charles Fillmore. And it's so appropriate today as I'm speaking about abundance is mine. And our theme for October is harvesting our good. And she found this by Charles Fillmore. It is the law of spirit that that we must be that. It is the law of spirit that we must be that which we would draw to us. If we draw to us love, then we must be love, be loving and kind. If we would have peace and harmony in our environment, we must establish it first within ourselves. This is such an easy thought pattern, but sometimes difficult to bring it into our own vibration and to know that if we want peace in the world, it starts first with us. If we want harmony in the world, it starts first at our dinner tables. It starts with our friends, even those who think differently than us. Because at the core, that is our common ground, that loving, safe place where we are really going to stand up for each other and support each other's dreams. That nothing is impossible when we come together as one, as one unified field. Rob's going to share a video with us this morning, and I've asked that Ray just play some light music behind it. And I want you just to kind of watch. And as you're watching, look at the words, and then I'll come back up to you. Thank you, Ray. So 
I think Judith really brought it home when she's just doing the daily word. When we were in Chicago, we saw everybody. We saw them at this um, architectural structure called the Bean. Do you all know what the Bean is? <laughs> it's like a fun house of a silver drop laid on its side, almost like mercury in those old fashioned thermometers. And I kept looking at Kim and she said, let's take a picture, let's take a picture, my kids have been here. And I'm like, what is so special about this bean? But everybody was having a great time. It didn't matter if they were old or young, a wheelchair, didn't matter their religion, it didn't matter who and how they showed up, everybody was having a great day. And I thought, can we do that? When we claim abundance in our lives, are we just talking money? No. no. If we want abundance, if we want to be filled over our cup overflowing, it is happiness. It is health. It is getting along with each other. It is doing more than getting along with each other. It is holding the very good, better than good, the goodest for each other. Because we hold that high vibration, wanting that to be an incredible place that we all want to lead, lead and live our lives from. So I love when Fillmore says, if you want more love in your life, you have to be more love. If you want more harmony in your life, guess what you have to be? More That's right. You've got to bring in what it is that you are seeking. We are already here in this present moment. You are already golden. You have everything you need right now inside of you sometimes it's still being revealed and we're looking at our lives and we're looking at what doesn't work and maybe we're focused on that and when you focus on that where does your energy go to, to that which is not working so when we want something fabulous in our lives hold that vision Sometimes it's just a little seedling. Someone's just planted the seed. When I mentioned I wanted to take, you know, my vacation and go someplace where I would experience fall, Judah said, I do this incredible art trip. But with COVID, they may not do it this year. She planted that seed months ago. And I said, okay, let's feel into this. She goes, Kimmin's going with me. Well, now you know I got to go because Kevin's going. <laughs> and what I really, really appreciate when we got there, Judith's been doing this trip 23 years, Four. 24 years. And Kim and I were newbies. We were the little children coming in with innocence in our eyes, having no clue what we were doing. And it's a watercolor class. The teacher asked the very first day, what are you afraid of? What might you be fearful of in this class? Now, those of you who are getting to know me well, I said, mm, I'm not very patient. I don't have a lot of patience and watercolor. You got to let it dry and you got to go back to it and you got to let it dry. And I just want to be done. And she said, I am your teacher. I said, how so? She said, I am impatient too. So I do multiple projects so I don't mess up the ones that have to dry. The rule was, get away from the painting. Let it dry. Let it be in its natural state and see what comes out of your intentions. So since I've been home, I thought this is kind of like meditation. Does anybody here paint at all? little oil, acrylics, water. So when you're painting, there's a rhythm to it. When we meditate, there's a rhythm to meditation. When you have an intention, you're kind of working on something, and then you let it go. And you let it be exactly what it's supposed to be. You're no longer in control. You're letting what is 
be. So that is definitely my lesson. So one of my friends on Facebook, she's been traveling up in the New England area and she posted like a basket of gourds falling out. And I thought, oh, I want to paint that. Oh, we have little talent. <laughs> so we do something in watercolor called a wash. You're taking one color over the whole page. And then after that, you may let it dry or you may paint into it, depending on what you're trying to do. And I was so excited. I got the wash down. That's just, whoosh, whoosh, I got that one. So I'm looking at her picture on the, on the um, Facebook, and it's fabulous. And I'm going to start drawing these little gourds in my mind. But I can't draw. That's not my talent. And it turns into these big three circular blobs of orange. And all of a sudden it went, I got pumpkins. I don't have gourds. It's transformed into pumpkins. And because I blobbed something in the top corner, that was my son. I'm like, I'm so brilliant. I have no clue what I'm doing. But the paint was showing up as the paint shows up. And I had so much fun with that. The next day I did it in blues and greens. And the next day, I did our birch trees. I'm still working on that one. But my whole thing is, when you're coming into a life experience, what is your intention? And if it shifts gears on you, is that okay? Maybe something bigger and more beautiful, more glamorous, more exciting is going to show up because you let go. You have an intention. You may have a goal at the end, but you let go of the how. You let go how the paint's going to dry, how your life is going to transform. You set the intention, three girls go on a trip. We're going to see A, B, C, and three ladies came back as the goddesses that you already know. <laughs> I do want to share a little piece of this journey that was very personal to me that I didn't know. So we each had an intention, and mine was to visit Reverend Ev Godina in Oak Park right outside Chicago. Now, little to me, you know, we think we know each other because we take classes together. He and I did some ministerial classes together. But what I didn't know, Ev had a really hard childhood, a really hard childhood. And he shared some of his story with us. And I went on his web page and I looked at his art and what he does. And as a very small child, about four years old, he always felt outside of his family. And his family was pretty um, violent towards him. And then he went off to school and he talks about a story where he was locked in a janitor's closet as a child with nothing but that peephole. And he cried and he cried and he felt unworthy of love. He felt that he was not a valuable member of his family. He was not a valuable member of his school. And why were these people so cruel to him? He didn't understand. So in the dark of that closet, when he finally breathed into himself and he looked on the floor in the shadows, he saw little scraps of paper. And he took these little scraps of paper and with his imagination, he thought, what if I could do what the children on the other side of this door is doing? What if I were part of everything and I wasn't so alone? And he takes these little scraps of paper and he starts forming shapes. And the shapes take form and they are people. And in his adult life, he takes these little shapes of paper and he does magnificent art. Are you about ready to show? I want you all to see what he creates. Rev Ev is an international artist and has these paintings in galleries in New York, Santa Fe, and has sold them all over the world. There is no paint in these paintings. But look at the beauty. And now that you know the story behind that, he came from a place of horror, feeling unloved, unvalued, and he created magnificent art that he can share universally. And from this place in his life, he found 
value. He found that creative spark within him and he said, I can bring this out into the world. So as a minister who knows what pain feels like, who knows what it feels like to be left alone, who knows what it feels like not to be accepted because of his sexuality, he can find love and joy in something so simple as shredded pieces of paper. So I'm thinking for us, how does that translate? From the horrors where you came from, from the discourse of anything you've ever been through, where is that richness that comes in that says, and here is where spirit dwells. And I dwell in that house too. And then you go out to somebody else and you begin to understand you're not alone. There's other people who also have gone through a journey, but we don't know those stories until they share them with us. And that place for abundance comes because we open our hearts and our minds to accept people in their totality of everything that they are, including the parts we don't always like. Because that is God. That is love. That is the richness, richness of the life that we came in to lead and to live. So from something that could have been a lifelong field of disaster... Beautiful art was created. Beautiful communion was created. And Rev shared with me, uh, Ev shared with me later that he actually went back to his family of origin since he's in the Chicago area where he grew up. And he's forgiven them. So for us, when we lay down at night and there's something on our hearts that isn't well and it's, it's stirring up discourse for us, it's uncomfortable for us, that's that moment that we lay it down. I forgive you. Not only do I forgive you, I forgive me for making these mistakes too. Because it's not usually a one-sided street. Now we know forgiveness is about us releasing the tie we have to something that happened out there. But it's also releasing us from that same tie from that same time. So what I did find out about this beautiful little church in Oak Park, uh, the very first minister, the founding minister, was there for 50 years. I thought I had it big with Reverend Bob here 25 years. That was 50 years. Now there was some interaction before Rev Ev came, but this minister is one of the first gay ministers in unity who came out. And he has a poem that I want to share with you. This is My Soul Remembers by Reverend Richard Dale Billings. I asked of life a little. She paid a just amount. I asked of life a lot. That is what I got. Have no fear in asking, whatever it may be, the wells of spirit's abundance flow on full and free. Ask of life the greatest, freely she will give. Ask of life the answers, then truly will you live. Namaste. Well, this is the time we share our tithes and our offerings with this ministry. And I would like you to... Um, uh, as the ambassadors come around to repeat with me, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. Uh, Tara wrote the song back in, hmm, I guess it was just uh, three years ago in 2018. It's called In the Joy of the Lord. I'm so happy to be in the joy of the Lord. I'm so happy to be in the joy of the Lord. I have found inner peace and harmonious accord. I'm so happy to be in the joy of the Lord. We can start right here. We can start right now. 
It's within us all and we all know how you seek within asking you will find overflowing with joy that was here all the time i'm so happy to be in the joy of the lord i'm so happy to be in the joy of the lord i have found inner peace and harmonious accord i'm so happy to be in the joy of the lord in the simplest of things that can be so great it's the natural things we underestimate not the thing but the feeling that we're all looking for we can be so happy in the joy of the lord i'm so happy to be in the joy of the lord i'm so happy to be in the joy of the lord i have found inner peace and harmonious support i'm so happy to be in the joy of the Lord. If you look for the light in your neighbor's eye, you can see right through the human disguise. The Christ within that comes shining through, and the light in them is the light in you. I'm so happy to be in the joy of the Lord. I'm so happy to be in the joy of the Lord. I have found inner peace and harmonious accord. I'm so happy to be in the joy of the Lord. I'm so happy to be in the joy of the Lord. Thank you, and thanks for helping us out. And as Gloria brings the offerings forward, we bless them with these words. Thank you, God, for blessing these gifts and those who share them. Together, thank you, God, for blessing these gifts and those who share them. And now I invite you to stand for the prayer for protection. And we'll have the children on the screen. And we'll join with them. Please join us now for Let There Be Peace on Earth. I'm a